He has an armor class of 13. Well, shit. Good day, my name is Matt. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to episode three. Uh, if you were following along at the end of episode two, the band got their asses handed to them and they were able to successfully stop and kill the zombies, but they were pretty beaten up and a little surprised and they realized they didn't have crowbars. So we went back to Burramore, rested up, recuperate all of our hit points, probably two or three days, and bought crowbars. We now have Joseph has a crowbar, as well as Winona, Wilona, and once they're rested up and uh, re-equipped, they're going to head back to the temple. Quick side note here, uh, last time I had written this up, and it was basically uh, it, when we encounter or enter a, an area, I'm going to roll to see if we run into what we're looking for, which is Sam's sister, Daisy. I also created a quick 2d6 encounter table in case we ran into things. Mainly the reason for that is this is a temple. We know it's haunted. Therefore, we will likely run into undead type things and the encounter tables that are on here will not apply. So I have a quick little one there. Uh, there's a slight chance if zombies or skeletons are encountered that it might be one of the party, hopefully not Daisy. Uh, during the interlude since I filmed episode two, uh, you know, in editing, I watched the video and I thought, you know, this this kind of, oh, look, there's zombies, boring, right? So I wanted to add a little bit of creativity, inspiration, uh, uniqueness to the encounters. So I've actually come up with a table of what the monsters are doing, and it's a, it's a 2D6 table, and we'll, we'll run into that. And then I also have, I, I did up another 2D6 table, and it is basically, it, it's what is this room, or what was this room before? And those will be, when we enter a room, we'll roll that and see what that is. And the reason for that is, is I, I want to be surprised as a player of what's in there, but as a solo DM, I want to kind of be surprised too. We head across the lake and prepare to enter the temple ruins again. Uh, if you didn't watch episode two, temple ruins are in this little uh, small island here. There's ruins, there's a trap door that goes down. This is Burrow Moor. So we rent a little boat go across the lake and to the island. At the trap door before going down, we are going to light torches. We are going to get our holy symbol ready. Yes, I know, she's a cleric. In the excitement of the battle, nearly dying, she, as well as me, forgot that she was a cleric and had turned undead. Uh, but she is going to get her holy symbol ready, maybe even say a prayer to her god and Hal is going to have her light spell ready just in case. And with that, we are going to head down into this ruin. At this intersection, we are going to listen. According to the rules, humans have a one in six chance of hearing at doors. I'm going to use this rule here to see if we hear anything so that we can maybe be prepared and not ambush like last time. Uh, other races, halfling and elf, have a two and six. So let's start with Joseph. Oh, Joseph, here's something. A little sidebar here. The way I'm doing this is I'm rolling as the player. Me as a GM, I actually don't know yet if there is something here. So in this case, if there is something, Joe has a chance to, or Joe did hear it. Hal did not. Sam did not. And Willona Nope, she's human, right? Yeah, nope, she did not. So Hal heard something if there is something here. And the way I'm going to do that is I am going to, oops, let's use this one. I'm going to roll my oracle. I'm not going to go over it again. If you don't know how I use my oracle, go back to the tools. I think it's episode two where I talk about oracles. It's on my channel. It's just 
is there something here? Has something moved back into this area after we left? Because remember I said we went back for a couple days. I think that is probably likely. This is a dungeon. We already know it's active because we ran into zombies within minutes of getting in here before. So I think it's more likely that there is something in this area. Something is here. So I got a three and a five against a two. That is a, an affirmative. Something else is here. At least Joe heard something that is here. What is here? So I'm going to look at my encounter tables here. See what is in this area. And remember, we haven't gone this way yet, so we don't know what's down there. Two. Oh, cool. All right. So it turns out one of the zombies that we fought last time is not actually dead. As we come down the stairs, Joe hears scraping across the ground. We've got our torches out now. We've got our swords out. And he goes to check. And sure enough, one of the zombies that we thought we had killed, maybe we cleaved off of its, its uh, head and shoulder, like an angle across its body, split it in half. And now he looks down and he sees that actually the top half of one of these zombies its head, shoulder, and arm is, is dragging itself. You know, maybe it heard them coming down the stairs. And so now it's kind of dragging itself, you know, dragging itself across the uh, dungeon floor towards them. And the reason I did that, it's, it's, I rolled really dead, but that's kind of boring just having a body there. We already know there's some dead there. So that's what's going on. And Joseph is going to step on the thing's head. I'm not going to make him roll for this because there's no point. Uh, he walks up and crushes the thing's skull, and Willona hits it with her mace and basically smashes it to a pulp. So, yes, yes, there was an encounter, but luckily we don't need to worry about that. All right, so the next thing is which way do we want to go? Now, we went this way before, and we came across a locked door. We listened. We did not hear anything. In the interest of searching this, because we are looking for Daisy, we don't want to leave any stone unturned. So I think we're going to go back that way. And we come up to the door there. Now, I don't believe Y-Box actually has rules for smashing a door. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, let's say, this door, since we do not have a thief who can pick the lock, Normally I just do lock picking, but the only other way to get this door open is to either smash the entire door down or smash the lock. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll 2d6. You know what, it's a hard lock. I'm gonna roll 3d6. This is how many hit points of damage this lock will be able to sustain. Oh, Jesus, 17, wow. Whoever built this, they knew what they were doing. All right, so this lock has 17 hit points. And what I'm going to do now is I'm not going to make them roll to hit because it's an inanimate object. It should be fairly easy to hit. However, I'm going to make them actually roll for damage. So let's see. Joseph, he's got a sword. That seems kind of silly. But all right, so he's going to take his sword and he's going to whack the uh, lock with his sword four points of damage. And the reason I'm go doing it this way is because every round that we do this is imagine smashing a door that is quite loud, especially in an enclosed area like this. This is a dungeon. This would be a loud sound that would reverberate pretty far in the dungeon and could very, very likely attract attention. So what we're going to do, actually, Hal is going to uh, be positioned, let me get a pencil here instead of my big fat finger, be positioned here watching down the hall so that nothing can sneak up on them as they strike these doors. Uh, Willona's going to take her mace. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That is a, let's see, Matt can do math occasionally. Um, and again, this is the same round. Sam will take his sword as well. 
And he's not, they're not like stabbing the uh, lock. They probably turn it around with their hilt and pfft, kind of smash it that way. Two. Yeah, he's a halfling. What do you expect? All right, so that is one round. Now, what I'm going to do is normally you roll for an encounter, a, a random encounter. It's a 1d6. Since they're making noise, I'm going to make this instead a 3d6. All right, please. No encounter. Whoops. It's got to be on in the uh, dice tray here. Son of a bitch. Willona hears something moving in the shadows. Now, I suppose they have a torch here. Probably she has a torch, so the light's shining down that hall. She doesn't see anything, but she hears something. And, all right, let's, let's roll, see what it is. As the GM, I want to know, is this something really bad? Or That is a six. That is zombies. And if you remember last time, I rolled a d4. Oh, thank goodness. One zombie turns this corner. And, of course, Wilona sees it and is like, oh, guys, guys, there's a zombie. All right, so let's do this. Sam is going to run back with Hal and be prepared to fight that thing. Now, it's a zombie. Zombies aren't fast. I'm going to say that they will be able to smash this one more round before the zombie gets right in front of them there and the next round they will fight. So Sam is actually going to run back here, and he's got a sling. So he's going to wait until the zombie's a little bit farther down the tunnel there, and then he's going to take a swing at it. But first, Joseph is going to take a swing at this lock. Six. So he actually smashes through that lock. All right, so they get that door now opens. Now the bad thing about having to smash the lock is now that door will not lock against this zombie. So the zombie gets into here, and actually Sam, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna put I'm gonna put another token out here. So that's where Sam and oh no, sorry, the party is really there. It's Sam and Hal are there. Let's do that. Joseph is there, and Willona is there. All right, now we've got to, actually, let's let's resolve this first. So he gets up to there. Sam is going to take his sling, and uh, he gets a plus one because it's a missile weapon. He's going to, oh, sorry, let's see, my card has got some eraser scrum on it. He is going to attempt to hit this zombie. Well, you know what we should first do? I, being the overzealous gamer that I am made up some cool cards because I did this last time during season one and I, well I actually I don't did I use that one I don't think I actually used that one I think I used well I had a troll huh, I don't know where he is anyway I had a troll but I made up some of these people seem to like them so I made up some quick ones I used mid journey to create some cool art I know there is sort of an attitude about using AI for RPG products. Since I'm not selling these, you know what? I say, I don't give a shit. Uh, these are for my own personal use. So I did up some zombie art and let's see how many hit points these things have. Oh, I don't need the rule book because it's right there. It's a one hit dice creature. That is a D6 in white box. So they have four hit points. They, let's see, does this one have a shield? I'm going to say, 50-50, it does have a shield, so its armor class is 12. So, zombie comes scraping along, dragging its right foot, walking down this hall with its shield. Sam's going to take a shot at it before it gets to them. He needs a 12, and he gets a plus one on this die. Oh, just made it. All right, good job, Sambo. All right, Sam, uh, let's see. Nope, Sling does D6. Five. Ooh, well, he, he does a perfect shot, and the little bullet flies from his sling and tags that zombie right in the head, and its head snaps back, snapping the neck, and it crumbles to the ground. Yay. We don't need to worry about that. 
Good deal. All right, so now the door is open. Let's see what this room is. Let's see. I'm going to pull this card here really quick so you guys can read it. All right, so this is the way these cards work. And I'm just going to give a quick overview. Depending on what level of the dungeon, we're at level one, you would roll a D8. And then every dungeon level that it say it's dungeon four or level four, you'd add a four to it. But it is dungeon level one. And so we should, according to this, roll a D8. But before I do that, that's just the treasure that's available in this room. I guess we should look at the map here. So you can see that it looks like there might have been a battle in here, which is cool because we're entering another room. We're going to roll to see if, you know what, now nah, use the black, the red ones. See if any of the party that we are searching for is in this room. You see, it looks like there used to be a battle in here. Let's see if they are here. Two. Nope. All right. So there's no monsters in this room. What did this room used to be? And I did this because I want to add flavor to it. All right. So this room is a water crypt. So if you remember this temple, it, it's a temple, ruins of a temple on this island in the middle of the lake. So I've kind of decided, yes, it is haunted. There's undead. But I wanted to have kind of a water theme because it's on a lake, you know. You, you don't you wouldn't build your temple on a lake if water wasn't important to some degree. So it's a water crypt, and what I'm my, my little table here says D6 crypts are in this room. Oh, there are six crypts in this room. Hopefully they're not occupied. Off of the walls in this room, maybe there's one here, two. Three, four, five, six. There are uh, like mausoleum uh, shelves, you know, like you would slide the uh, coffin into. There are six of those crypts in this room. There is nothing in this room. Thank the Lord. All right, so we're in that room. Uh, we get in this room. We are going to close the door, knowing that it won't lock. And then we're going to use our crowbars as kind of wedges to... Uh, still keep the door so that the door doesn't easily open in. Okay? We're just going to take one of these guys is going to go except Hal. Hal is going to stay by the door and listen intently out into the halls. We're going to open up each one of these crypts and inside, instead of being a flat horizontal bench basically, it's actually like a little lip and it's actually like a bathtub almost inside there and it's filled with water. Each one is filled with water. And inside each one is a body. And, you know, long dead, mainly skeletons now. The water is probably pretty putrid and gross. Uh, <laughs> let's check to see if there's any treasure in each one of these crypts. And let me see how I'm gonna do that. I took a few minutes to figure out exactly how I want to do this. So the way I'm going to do it is we are going to roll a D6. If it's a one, that means there's something in the crypt that's dead, well, undead. So it will react to us digging around in its crypt. Hopefully that never happens. I'm going to roll a red D6 with a two and six chance of there being gold or a gem in there. And then I'm going to roll a white D6 for magic items. All right. So we want, and this will happen for every single crypt, but he's going to take his sword and kind of poke around into the water. Cause I'm assuming it's kind of gross and you know, maybe it's got some rotten flesh floating in there or something. I don't know. Never been in a waterlogged soupy crypt before. Uh, and see if anything uh, happens. All right. No monster, yay. No gold and no magic item. All right, Hal will dig around, or no, Hal was watching the door. Sam is going to dig around in Crypt 2. He will probably grab one of his torches and poke around in there. Oh, shit. No, wait, that's a magic item, sorry. <laughs> this is the monster. So, a magic item. All right, so he finds something. I'm just going to write this here. 
All right. Wilona is going to take her mace and kind of poke around in there as well. See if she, this is in Crypt 3. See if she can find anything. And unfortunately, whatever is in there is pissed off. Shit. All right. Let's see what is in the crypt. And there will only be one of these, whatever it is. Nine. Oh, fuck. Ghoul. Thank the Lord. So Wilona takes her mace and starts kind of digging around in there, splashing around in the water, hoping to stir up a magic item or something like that. And instead, an arm comes ripping out of the water and grabs her mace and then up sits a ghoul, you know, flesh rotted off of it, and it screams. <sighs> they are going to... I'm assuming it's going to scramble out of the crypt so that it can actually attack them. And as it does that, uh, I'm going to let it have one attack on Wilona, and everyone else will get one attack on it before it is out of the crypt, and then we will get into like regular melee, okay? So it reaches out at Wilona, and we will assume Wilona and the ghoul's attack will happen at the exact same time. That is the ghoul and a, oh, he is a two hit dice creature. Technically that would hit because the way white box works is if you are a two hit die creature, you get a plus two basic hit bonus. So for every hit dice you get a plus one. She needed a, it needed a 14, that's 12. It hits, well Lona strikes it, she wiggles or maybe uh, they're, they're fighting over her mace and she just kind of chucks it forward and tries to ram him right in the head. He has an armor class of 13. Well, shit. Her mace <laughs> gets ripped from her hand and she stumbles back. Oh, you know what? This makes sense. So she's got the mace and they're kind of fighting with it and the ghoul reaches out and grabs her arm, which if you look here, Paralyzing touch. Uh, I don't know if did she get a save. Whoop. Let's look really quick. I don't know if she gets a save against that. Cool. Learn to spell map. Oops. I was literally on the page. Yep. Saving throw. Oh, huh. it's right there. So she has a 15 with a plus two to poison and paralyzation because she's a cleric and she failed. So it grabs her arm. She immediately kind of paralyzes up, locks up, her bones lock up or whatever. And she rolled a one anyway. It actually kind of hits her with the, uh, the mace. She falls back and crumples to the ground and it roars and then scrambles out of the uh, crypt. Let me get this out of here. All right, which mean Joseph will then turn around and uh, lurch at this thing and try to stab it with his sword. 15, It needed. he needed a 13, that is a hit. Oh, wow. And he ain't playing games wax it really good then Sam will turn around and attempt to strike it with his short sword as well and he misses all right so now we go to regular initiative we will have remember how I do it good guys are blue bad guys are red good guys fail all right let's see between Joseph and Sam I think the ghoul would see Joseph as more of a uh, danger. So it will attack Joseph. Needs a 14. And he misses. All right, Joseph will attempt to hit him again. 10, that is not good enough. Sam will go. Jeez, oh, Sam misses. All right, she's paralyzed. Hal 
Hal, Hal's going to turn around and fight because she's not going to just stand there at the door. So she runs over with her staff and attempts to whack this thing. Oh, we almost got a 17. Why do you hate me so? All right. Initiative again. All right, the good guys win. Joseph will attempt to remove this thing's skull. And he does. He only needed one. He manages to kill the ghoul. The ghoul crumples down and lops, he lops its head off or whatever. All right, so we managed to kill that ghoul. All right, now uh, I what I'm going to do is I, I would take this two different ways. And because they're having a fairly easy time at the moment, I think I'm going to require Willona to make a save every round or she remains paralyzed, okay? Um, as I was saying, there's two ways you could approach this. You could either say the ghoul is dead, dead, undead, dead for real, and you could say that whatever magic supernatural energies caused her to be paralyzed that's now worn off and she recuperates um, I kind of like the idea that the ghoul is the, the danger has been removed but it isn't so much a supernatural thing that paralyzes them I like to think that it's more of a you've never seen this horrible thing snap to life and claw at you and you're just scared shitless. So I'm going to kind of go in that direction, but I'm going to allow her to make a saving throw every round, otherwise she remains paralyzed. Paralyzed with fear. 13, she gets plus two. That would be a 15, okay. So all that discussion for naught. Uh, she manages to come out of it. Um, they, they take a round or two to kind of, you know, have a drink of water, calm down, it's all right, we killed him, yada, yada, yada. Hal goes back to watching the door, and uh, I think we rolled. There was nothing else in there. So after a few minutes, Joseph is going to check crypt number four. And I think this time they're going to do it a little bit more smart. <laughs> I like to think that my players, me, it, they're learning as they're going through this dungeon. So here a moment ago, they were each in one crypt digging around. I think now Joseph is going to take his sword and poke around in there while Willona and Sam are on the side. So if anything comes out, all three will immediately get an attack on it, right? That's a little bit smarter way to do things. All right, so is there anything in Crypt 4? No monster and no treasure and no go pieces, at least that they could find. They'll move on to Crypt 5. And absolutely nothing. Then they'll move on to Crypt 6. Oh, goody. A monster and gold. So that was Crypt 2 and 6. We've got gold. And in this one, we have an item. All right. So what is in this crypt? Again, there's only room for one thing in here. And holy shit. Another fucking ghoul. All right, hit dice. Whoa, Jesus. All right, so this time we're a little bit more prepared. And this thing comes alive in the crypt. And so what we will do is he stumbles back, get a little bit discombobulated, and that will give the ghoul enough time to slide out of the crypt and then we will go to regular initiative. So he steps back, his buddies kind of, you know, uh, grab onto him, make sure he doesn't fall. And then we'll go, and the, the ghoul slides out, kind of slurpy, wet, slimy, gross. And then we will do initiative. Uh, and the bad guy wins. It's just like, it's so typical. All right, there's three of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Does not like Joseph. And it will reach for Joseph. And... All right. 
All right, I'm going to use the uh, very simple method for this solo game. It'll do double damage. It attempts to claw at him. It hits, and it does... Oh, Lord, it does eight points of damage. Hi, Joseph. It's nice to meet you. And because he rolled a critical, I'm not even going to give him a save. Joseph, scared out of his mind, essentially has a heart attack and falls. All right. Now Sam goes, standing next to his suddenly dead partner, and he misses. Well, Lona, you know what? Can she turn undead? She can. At first level, she has a 15. Check that, isn't that, isn't that pretty cool? Like holds my pages for me. Uh, all right, so she steps up with her holy symbol and calls her deity, who I have not created yet, uh, in the name of, I don't know, St. Cuthbert, <laughs> I don't know, in the name of St. Cuthbert, be gone, vile creature. She needs a 15. And she fails. It chuckles at her. <laughs> Hal, uh, obviously, you know, probably heard Joseph yelp like a little girl before he slumped to the ground and then now heard Walona's um, thoughts. She is going to turn around and immediately cast a light spell on this thing's, the tip of this thing's nose. It seems to be her go-to in an attempt to save our ass so we don't die. She casts her spell and the ghoul is immediately blinded. I'm sure somebody's going to say it's supernatural, like whatever. I'm just going for quick and easy here, all right? All right, so next round, uh, the party against the ghoul. Uh, all right, the five to one party wins. Sam will go. Oh, 19. All right, he strikes at it with his sword. So my, oops, ah, damn it. Four, so that is, oh, I can't, I can't. oh, wait, no, I don't need to track it. There's only one. So three points of damage. He stabs the ghoul in the leg. Wilona, having failed her attempt, will now try to bash it over the head. She's got a, I don't know. Maybe, her, you know what, let's, let's, let's do a little character work here. Her holy symbol is actually on the end of her mace. So she is going to, and of course she retrieved her mace earlier. She is going to, since she's already holding the mace, attempt to crack her mace over the ghoul's skull. She missed. Uh, Hal will step up with her staff and attempt to hit the ghoul. <laughs> okay. Oh, Hal, good job. Uh, let's see, D6. And again, I'm just going to do double damage. <laughs> well, yeah, it's been one of those days, guys. All right. And, oh, wait, no, it gets to go. All right, so... It's blinded, so it gets a minus four, and we're just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. And it swings at Sam. So that would be a 12, minus four, eight. He has a 14 armor class, it misses. Blindly swings at him as it steps and lurches towards him. Initiative. And they roll the one, it rolled a four. Uh, it's going to attempt to hit Sam again because it's moving in that direction. So that would be a miss as well. Sam, right in front of it, will attempt to remove one of its legs. And he fails. Jesus. Willona. 19. Wow, all right. And she does D6. 3. She smashes this thing's skull wide open, and it goes down. That would be two whites that we have killed. All right. They are going to attempt to bind wounds. Well, you don't have to attempt. You just do it. Bind wounds on Mr. Joseph. Oh, and he gets back to full health. But 
we are going to crash here for a few minutes. All right, uh, and real quick, what we're gonna do next is we're going to figure out what they found here. So let's start with the gold. This crypt, crypt six had gold, and one through three, it's GP, or, or I'm sorry, it's gold or a gem. Uh, one through three, gold, piece, gold pieces, four to six, it's gems. Jeez, I can't roll tonight. All right, it's gems. And the way we're gonna do that is it's going to be a, oh, sorry. We're gonna roll D4, there are two, and then we're going to do a D10 times that by 10 for the gold piece value. All right, so one gem is a 10 gold piece gem. The other one is an 80 gold piece gem. All right, and then Sam's magic item, which I probably should have just gone ahead and grabbed it immediately all right so we're just going to use this table i really don't like the white box um, it's way too complicated we're going to roll on this table right here this is a d6 roll that is a four roll one d6 on the weapons and armor table that could be good and that is a d20 roll that's this table right here eight Let's, you know what, let's do this real quick. Let's check the Delving Deeper and see if it has a treasure table on armor type. Oh, it does, huh? See, look at that. Using different sources, we can pull that together. D100 table. That is a 36. Is a shield plus two. Oh, didn't we get a shield plus one? So we are going to stop right there. And I hope you enjoyed this. We're going to actually, I think our guys, our, our band is going to attempt to secure that door as best as they can. Maybe take an hour rest, let Joseph recuperate. And once that's over, they will then continue on their journey. <laughs>